That song that ended up becoming the album name, Humble Quest, was born out of just me feeling really disconnected from my music and myself. I had just had my son and was just kind of reclaiming ownership over my body and my um, identity as someone that, you know, loves doing music but can't really do it professionally right now in a touring sense. So I think that that was all really humbling and led to a lot of these songs. And then it just felt like the right title for this chapter of my life. Can I get a hallelujah? Country music star Maren Morris debuted her breakout double platinum single, My Church, back in 2016. Over the next six years, she released two studio albums and earned 14 Grammy nominations, including her 2017 win for Best Country Solo Performance. Thank you for giving me the most incredible year of my life. Today, the 31-year-old singer-songwriter is about to release her brand new album, Humble Quest, which comes out March 25th. It was a pandemic project, but I wouldn't say it's like a pandemic themed album. It was just born out of a very strange time. But yeah, it kind of chronicles the last two years of my life. And I think just the, the compression of all of us having to like live with our roommates or partners or spouses or whoever in that time during shutdown was, um, you know, for a lot of people, it ended relationships, and for others, it made them stronger. And luckily, I think my husband and I were in the latter group. And yeah, so there are a lot of songs on here about our relationship and working through the moments where we wanted to rip each other's hair out, um, but loving each other through it. And then the whole album kicks off with my single Circles Around This Town. Sort of documents my journey to Nashville from Texas nine years ago to become a songwriter and how much I've changed since that but also stayed the same and you know the the kind of irony of even if you feel like you've made it you're always going to be chasing down the target no matter what because it's like your life's passion so yeah it's it's a lot of different elements but I feel like it's also a really comforting record because it, it was really healing for me to make. Marin and her husband, fellow country music star Ryan Hurd, were married in 2018. Over the years, they've often worked together, collaborating on numerous songs, and today, Ryan remains his wife's favorite co-writer and duet partner. Yes, he is. And even if he weren't, I wouldn't say that on television or <laughs> in an interview. Uh, but no, he, he is. And I think we got to a place a long, long time ago where Writing songs with each other is fun, but it's not the only thing that ties us together. Like, we have so many more things in common beyond that. So it's just not a make or break. It's like a bonus that I can write songs I love with him because he's all these other things than just, like, Ryan heard the artist to me now and vice versa. So, yeah, he's been on all my records, but this one he's on a ton because he was my closest and best writing partner during lockdown and we were both going through the same things and like really getting to know each other in a deeper way because we've been touring for so long this was the most time we had ever spent with each other and we had a kid so we were just learning all these new facets of each other and us as a relationship and so yeah we definitely got stronger we had some we had our moments probably like every other partnership but um, because it felt like 10 years of marriage and one but um, yeah making it out the other side was just so encouraging I love him so much and he really helped me during such a tough time I don't know if I would have gotten out the same way I mean I have some scratches but I, I definitely wouldn't have made it through with my head this high without him the couple welcomed their first child, Hayes, in March of 2020, just as the pandemic was beginning to spread across the country. I obviously can only speak for my journey becoming a parent, but what I've heard is a resounding theme is that you are just scared shitless the second that they're here with you and everything just became really raw because you're not just looking through your own um, story anymore you're looking through their eyes and they're experiencing everything for the first time and 
their interactions with every person, every moment of the day is imprinting on them. And so you just become so hyper aware of their surroundings. And so that did initially make me like tense up because you're just, you become so fearful because it's, it's just not about you anymore. Um, so yeah, but I, I think also knowing again, like letting go of control and letting them be themselves and grow into whoever they're supposed to be. Like you're the guardian, but you, and you're supposed to take care of them. But I think you're also just there to kind of be like a light keeper while they find their path. But yeah, I think in a creative way, it probably helped me see things in a newer light and a deeper way and just feel more empathy for my fellow human, just having to raise one. And um, like he's already taught me so much about how to be a person. And um, it's definitely a, a killing of ego in the best sense is like when you have to care for another human being in the best way. He's about to turn two, and you know he's obviously like in the, a very chatty stage right now. Like not a lot of it makes any sense, but he thinks he makes sense. And um, he just had to get glasses, so he's he's <laughs> he looks adorable. I was like, I don't think this kid can get any cuter. But then he got glasses this week. Poor thing. Um, but yeah, he's obsessed with like animals and he's just such a sweet kid. I don't know if he's gonna be musical at all. Like there's no pressure from my husband or me on that front, but he definitely is a really curious kid and just loves um, to meet people. And yeah, he's, he's just the sweetest kid. I don't know what I did to deserve such a sweet boy, but we're really lucky to have him. The 64th Annual Grammy Awards will be held on April 3rd, and this year, Marin has two nominations, including a Best Country Duo nod for Chasing After You, a song she recorded with her husband for his debut album, Pelago. I love chasing after you. Oh my gosh, it feels so full circle because I met Ryan nine years ago in a writing room, and we didn't know each other, and we wrote a terrible song. I don't know why we ended up writing again, but I'm glad we did because it led us to where we are now. But yeah, watching him become like this multi number one songwriter to signing a label deal as an artist and then being on this duet with him the last year with Chasing After You, it all culminating into his first artist number one and his first Grammy nomination that we get to share. It's like, it just feels so fateful in a weird, random way. Marin's other nomination is for Best Country Song for Better Than We Found It, a single she released in October 2020 in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Can we leave this world better than we found it? I'll be honest, I didn't, you know, start making music to become an activist. I think it was like a byproduct of just seeing the inequality in the genre I happen to come up in. And so, and just becoming aware of it, it's like once you are, you can't really shut your eyes again. So I think, yeah, having a Grammy nomination for best country song for a song like that, it was just such a surprise in a forum like it is. And um, yeah, it's a huge honor. And that was like one of my favorite most impactful music videos as well to make. And I think that it's, it's a huge honor to be recognized, but also I hope it brings even more um, awareness and recognition to like what has been happening. And um, so hopefully art, yeah, can sometimes dictate what is going on in the culture. Marin's fans will be happy to hear she recently announced a 41 date concert tour which will begin in June with a very lucky boy along for the ride. Yeah, I'm gonna bring him out on the road this year. Uh, we've done a couple weekend trips on the bus with Hayes, so, so far he's a good bus bunk sleeper, but um, it's really sweet. I got to build out this tour bus specifically for having a toddler out on the road with me, so he's got like a crib bunk 
that has cute animal wallpaper in it and um, yeah, it's it's gonna be our little home on the road this summer, but uh, yeah, he's gonna have as normal an upbringing as a kid could have, but he's just gonna have parents that have a weirder job than the other kids at school. He probably won't think it's that cool in a few years to be on a tour bus, but I'm gonna remind him that like, it is. The Humble Quest Tour is scheduled to end this December, fittingly with a final show in Nashville, Tennessee. I mean, my heart is in Nashville. Like, the, the music that is created here um, by, like, some new folks that have come through, but also, like, my friends that I've made the last 10 years is what inspires me to keep going. I feel like the best songwriters in the world live here. And so I'm just excited to see what new art is born out of such a crazy time. I think that music has been such a healer during all of this chaos, and I feel like really honest work is being created out of that mess. And so I'm excited, and you know, once the pieces are picked back up and touring can kind of resume in a hopefully more normal way, I'm excited to, yeah, just see my friends out on the road because I want to go back to shows. I'm, I'm excited to see my fans on the road this summer and yeah, like raise my kid and just like kind of settle into my 30s and just see what songs fall out of it.